the Red Death had long devastated the country. No pestilence had ever been so fatal. Blood was its seal, the redness and the horror of blood. The starlit stains upon the face of the victim were the pest ban which shut him out from the aid and from the sympathy of his fellow men. progress of the disease was the incident of half an hour. But Prince Prospero was happy and dauntless. When his dominions were half depopulated, he summoned a thousand hale and light-hearted friends from among the knights and dames of his court, and with these retired to the deep seclusion of one of his castellated abbeys. The external world could take care of itself. The prince had provided all the appliances of pleasure. There was beauty, there was wine, all these and security were in. Without was the Red Death. While the pestilence raged most furiously abroad, Prince Prospero entertained his thousand friends at a masked ball. In the apartment stood a gigantic clock of ebony. Its pendulum swung to and fro, and when the hour was to be stricken, there came a sound which was clear and loud and deep. At each lapse of an hour, the musicians of the orchestra were constrained to pause in the performance, and there was a brief disconcert the whole gay company. But when the echoes had fully ceased, the light laughter at once pervaded the assembly, and then, after the lapse of sixty minutes, there came yet another chiming of the clock, and then were the same tremulousness as before. To and fro in the seven chambers there stalked a multitude, and the revel went whirlingly on until at length there commenced the sounding of midnight upon the clock. There were many in the crowd who had become aware of the presence of a masked figure which had arrested the attention of no single individual before, and the rumor of this new presence having spread itself whisperingly around, there aroused from the whole company a murmur expressive of disapprobation and surprise then, finally, of terror, of horror, and of disgust. But from a certain nameless awe with which the mummer had inspired the whole party, there were found none who put forth hand to seize him. Unimpeded, he passed and made his way uninterruptedly but with the same solemn and measured step. And now was acknowledged the presence of the Red Death. He had come like a thief in the night, and one by one dropped in the blood-bedewed halls, and died, each in despairing posture of his fall. And the life of the ebony clock went out with that of the last, and darkness and decay and the Red Death held illimitable dominion over all.